Grace to you and peace with God who is, who was, and who is. Amen. Here the third lesson from the word of God as it is written in John, the gospel according to St. John, chapter 6, the verses 22, 29. It was the next day, the crowd which had stayed on the other side of the lake realized that there had been only one boat there. They knew that Jesus had not gone in it with his disciples, but that they had left without him. Other boats which were there from Tiberius came to shore near the place where the crowd had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. When the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they got into those boats and went to Capernaum looking for him. When the people found Jesus on the other side of the lake, they said to him, teacher, when did you get here? Jesus answered, I am telling you the truth. You are looking for me because you ate the bread and had all you wanted, not because you understood my miracles. Do not work for food that spoils. Instead, work for the food that lasts for eternal life. This is the food which the Son of Man will give you, because God, the Father, has put his mark of approval on the Son of Man. So they asked him, what can we do in order to do what God wants us to do? Jesus answered, what God wants you to do is to believe in the one God sent. Let us pray. We pray you grant us great grace so that our meditations on the sacrifice of our Redeemer may be fruitful to us, O oh Lord, through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. You are looking for me because you ate the bread and had all you wanted, not because you understood my miracles. Please do not work for food that spoils. Instead, work for the food that lasts for eternal life. Dear friends, dear congregation, the fourth Sunday in Lent, it's a very fulfilling Sunday. It has several lens to, to be approached in the lessons that we read and in the celebration. And it's a, it's, it's a, it's a Sunday one could teach many, many lessons. It's a Sunday the church otherwise observes as a, a, a special Sunday during the, uh, the, the, the season of Lent. I'll mention a few. First of all, this Sunday is like standing, breaking the Lent season into two. We have had so far up to this moment observing Lent with fast. And, and uh, according to the uh, ancient tradition, Lent was observed with humility and fasting. However, when people fasted, uh, Sundays were not included because every Sunday in the Christian calendar is celebrated as Easter. So Sundays are not included in those 40 days of Lent uh, fasting, which are prescribed uh, by, uh, by, by the liturgy. But then, even though Sundays are not included, the first Sunday in Lent is treated like the middle Sunday 
and uh, it, it, it allows Christians who have been fasting up to now to do some form of celebration. So on the first Sunday in Lent, the churches could actually organize an agape and they could actually celebrate and, and uh, to go out of the way. That's why it was very, very coincidental that yesterday we had this big celebration of the inauguration of four CWF groups and the, the, the reception of 20, 34 CWF uh, members into the Christian Women Fellowship Movement in the Presbyterian Church, uh, USA. Presbyterian Church in Cameroon, USA. So the first Sunday in Lent is treated like Refreshment Sunday, meaning that it is a Sunday when you can refresh yourself after observing a fast or after grieving. It's like a period when people grieve for the dead and at a certain time, they say, let us have a family meeting. And during that family meeting, they have very special wine and special food to, 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 to eat together as a, as a break from the time when they were soaring. That's the first thing. So the first Sunday in Lent is like refreshment Sunday. We'll come back to it because the readings of today are actually, I mean, the, uh, the Exodus and, and, and uh, John are focused on that. The second theme that comes through on the, the, this first Sunday Lent is that it is also called Mothering Sunday. Mothering Sunday, not uh, actually, as I said, is like Mother's, uh, son, uh, Mother's Day, but, I, I, uh, but, I, uh, but actually it is like Mother's Day, but it is called Mothering Sunday. That is a Sunday when special attributes are given to the mother, the feminine parent. And this is characterized by children remembering their mother in a very special way. Remembering their earthly mothers as those through whom they came into the world and as those who, as, who nurtured them in their infancy and brought them to the level where they are. Now, Mothering in this sense is that you carry this idea of mothering to give thanks. And as I said about grieving, some of the children will use this day to remember their mothers who are no longer in place. And so they will gather together and have a very special service to think about their mother. Not so much to grieve again, but to give thanks to God for what their mother did for them while they were still alive. And so it's an opportunity for people to recollect those who have gone ahead, their parents, their mothers in particular, who have gone ahead to heaven, and then to pray to God to give them a place of eternal rest until the time when all of them, the children, are able to join and reunite in the kingdom of God. So in that sense, the mother's picture comes back to mind and people focus on that. Now, in addition to that, in focusing on the mother, the children also have to sometimes leave their place of work and take special leave to go home and meet their mothers and have time with their parents. And when they go home, they have a special meal with their, with their, with their mothers and, uh, and they, they remember their mother, they thank their mother for what they had learned from the mother. Sometimes they have, some of the lessons are forgotten, but sometimes when they go back and remind the mother, the mother reminds them of the good days and tells them what they should do and what they should not do. And then most of the, the, the lessons we have had, a testimonies that we have had, is that children have confessed that their mother told them, don't take somebody's thing for which you cannot pay. And don't, uh, don't overspend your money and don't borrow too much. Make sure that you do not borrow more than fifty percent of your of your of, of, of your, your income, and this is a lesson I also learned that I should not spend more than fifty percent of my income before the month ends. Then I will run out of it and I will, I will become a pauper, and that is the lesson many uh, mothers teach their children. So they go back to thank the mother, and the mother reminds them, and they can live the rest of their life in thanksgiving. Now, apart from the actual mother, 
The church is also treated as a mother. Let me have something to do. <clears throat> Just a minute. Thank you. The mother in the house here just give me something to refresh. <laughs> so my throat is refreshed. Now, I was saying that the church is, is treated as a mother. As we hear in the scriptures, the church is like the bride of Christ. And when the church is treated like the bride of Christ, it means that the children have to look onto the church as a mother. So the sense of Mother Sunday is also followed up by children going back to the, the churches where they were, uh, they were baptized or confirmed or married or ordained and to give thanks in that church. So Mother Sunday is an opportunity for people to take leave and go back to their home church. To their, to their, it may not necessarily be where they were born, but they can go back where they were born, but they can go back especially where they remember that they were, they were baptized, they were confirmed, they were married, or they were admitted into groups, CYF, CWF, CMF, choir, YPs, and they thank God for that uh, event and they remember that church. And so this reminds Christians to be able to remember some facts about their Christian upbringing. When they ask you, where were you baptized? You should be able to say when you were baptized, where you were baptized, and the pastor who baptized you. These are facts that you should keep. You should not forget them. So that when you are writing a new card for a membership card for you and we ask you this information, you should be able to give. And if you can remember this, then you will always be thankful to God because you remember that event. And wherever you are, you will remember your home church. Even while you are here, you should be able to send something home to, to, to help to support the church at home. And so this is the sense in which this Sunday is also Mother <laughs> Sunday. And so, dear friends, in this sense, we are brought together to celebrate in mid-Lent a special day. But let's go back to the text we read from John. John, the lesson we read from John is part of a longer lesson. And the longer lesson is what the, the capital lesson we should remember is that it is uh, uh, John is reporting on an event that is very, very uh, 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 significant to us. It is the event of Jesus feeding people with bread. And the Bible tells us uh, I mean that, and the John quotes it, it is the, the feeding of the people is as a result of Jesus taking bread and giving thanks to God. And then the bread is multiplied and 5,000 people are fed with that bread. So the significant thing there is for Jesus and for us Christians, we are being taught that just lifting up the bread and giving thanks to God can fulfill like it did in that case where Jesus just lifted the bread and gave thanks to God and gave the disciples and said, give out to them. And the bread that was the bread and fish that were taken from a young a, a young a young person a YP for for example who, who had the packed lunch and the, Jesus, uh, the, uh, the disciples are identified and they brought it and he blessed it and gave it to them while the disciples were contemplating how can we take care of so many people but Jesus always trusted the Father and that is a lesson we should learn and that's a lesson with the mothers teach the children that make sure before you eat. You say your grace. The saying grace is, uh, is actually thanking God for, for, for it is by grace that this plate of food has been made available to you. So the mother will tell the children, make sure you say grace before meals, before you eat. We have learned that. That's what Jesus teach, uh, taught us. And so now this lesson we are reading today is that people who uh, ate that bread, Suddenly, Jesus, of course, did not stay in the place after walking such a miracle, after doing a mystery, after doing some wonderful thing. He always retired to have a quiet time with the Father. And when he retired, he went away to his headquarters in Capernaum. Uh, I told you last time 
I mean, next week we are we'll, something we'll be talking about the headquarters in Bethany near Jerusalem. But Capernaum <clears throat> is in Galilee, where Jesus came from and where he said the um, main work was done. So he always went to Capernaum and people gathered there. So he uh, retired there and the disciples followed. I mean, they, 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 uh, afterwards, but the, the, the people who remained behind could not find them. So they too jumped into the boats because the Capernaum is across the, the Lake of Galilee and, uh, and, and they were uh, on the other side. So they took boats and they sailed across and they met Jesus. Now the point is that they were looking for Jesus, not I mean, as, uh, the, the, because they, they had eaten bread and they thought they, they could use Jesus who could work such miracles to make him a king. Those of you who watch Nigerian films, you have seen how the kings lavish people with money and then when somebody, in media, when somebody has money, he, he comes to the village and then they were asking, oh, is this your car? He said, this is one of my many cars because they want to show how much money they have made. And they will want the villagers will see such a person and say, we just can have this. Then let's make the person a king. Then we, uh, the, the king will be feeding us. And so they wanted to make Jesus a king, an earthly king. So Jesus knew this and then told them, you follow me, not because of the miracle I worked, the, not because you understood the significance of the miracle I did, but because you ate physical food that I gave you. So that's where our theme comes from. Do not work for food that perishes, but work for food that is eternal. And here we come to the mission, the missionary message I have for you today. It is that in the end, Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus gave bread, quite all right, but Jesus himself is the bread of life. And that is the lesson Exodus and, and, and John want to teach us, that it is God himself who is the center of our life. Don't just pick what God does, but believe in God and you will have everything else. And so Jesus is the eternal bread God has sent. And anyone who wants to be satisfied at all times should believe in Jesus. And that's why we Christians have been structured. We have structured the church around Jesus. We have structured our name around Jesus. So for, for us, in particular, the PCC, people are asking, why don't we name some things Presbyterian Youth Fellowship, Presbyterian Women Fellowship? We say, no. We don't name Presbyterian Fellowship because our leader is Jesus Christ. So we name it Christian Youth Fellowship, Christian Women Fellowship, Christian Men Fellowship, Christian University, even CPC Bali, uh, 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 you know, and so things like that. And uh, we name the, uh, according to uh, the, how we want to reflect our attachment to Jesus Christ and how we want to reflect that Jesus is the center of our life. And so my friends, whether you celebrate today as Mother Sunday, Jesus is mother. God is mother. Now, don't be tempted to throw stones at me because I have had that once when I preached this sermon and I mentioned there that God is mother. Let us not always say he, God. But that's why sometimes I, I prefer to use the word God because God can be looked at as our father and as our mother. It should, there should be no offense. Because this is the lesson that we are, uh, we, are, we, are, we are getting. If Jesus can feed us as our earthly mother, then we can also use the title of mother to God. We can attack the title of mother to God because we see God's attributes of our mother and we see godliness in our mothers. Whether you take today as refreshment Sunday, take it that the bread that you eat is Jesus Christ. Jesus is the eternal one. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you will enter eternal life. So that is the bread that Jesus gives, eternal life. And if you want eternal life, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will have bread forever. I don't have to say much. The youth secretary already mentioned something from Jewel and gave you part of the message for today. And I just compliment with the lessons for today. The children have also given you something that you can do to praise God because you have to see what God does. God feeds us when we are hungry. And so you should always be thankful to God. And 
first john is telling us about jesus the person of jesus the center of our life whom god sent into the world so we see jesus as the son of god and jesus is god believe in the lord jesus christ and you will have eternal life do not go after food that perishes but go for food that leads to eternal life amen amen